Deku versus Invincible isn't close. It's actually nasty work. Now, just to be 100%, this is one of those versus ideas that is definitely spawned out of the idea that they just both so happen to be superheroes right along the likes with an Omni-Man versus Superman or Homelander, etc. With that out the way, this wash is gonna be immaculate. The moveset. Now, being fair with Deku, we're gonna start with him. He has a lot of raw shit in his power set. All of his courts with one for all completely make him an insane monster in his own verse. You got Float, which allows Deku to use a sort of levitate ability. Smoke Screen, which generates thick purple clouds from Deku's body as an obvious smoke screen. Black Whip, which is Deku's kind of like Spider-Man ability where he can produce tendrils of dark energy which he can use for grappling, swinging, and all of that and mobility. He, he gets pretty useful with it. He can combine these all together. Danger Sense, which allows users to detect nearby threats. Also very Spider-Man. Fajin, which allows the user to build up and store kinetic energy by performing repetitive movement. And this is something that I really believe can actually hurt Invincible. And finally, the most hacks of them all is Gear Shift, which allows the user to alter the speed of anything to touch, allowing them to accelerate the force of a target, either by enhancing the impact force of their own strikes or by causing the target to lose control of their own velocity. Basically, if Deku touches you, he can alter the speed of your own body, but it also does cause a massive shock and whiplash for him. He combines these quirks together to do insane amounts of damage in very smart and creative ways. To do insane amounts of damage to opponents, based basically considered unkillable, but he does essentially have to set it up and get there for it to be a really hard shot like that. But on to Invincible. His is a lot more simple. Mark Grayson is a Viltrumite, which is essentially superhuman strength, superhuman speed, superhuman stamina, superhuman endurance, flight, which is caused by him maintaining an equilibrium balance in his ear. He has insane invulnerability to massive amount of damage that he can genuinely just survive straight up. He has an enhanced healing factor in decelerated aging. The last thing has nothing to do with this fight because it's not going to go on more than like three minutes. Now for the fight. Now this is where the headcanon comes into play because I want to go into it with the idea that Deku really may have a chance to at least do some damage on Mark because I feel like everybody watching this seeing Invincible and how much damage he can tank and like how long he can keep fighting just on a back to back basis like Deku genuinely may not be able to out put anything like quick enough in order to genuinely damage mark straight up but giving deku the chance to at least get a off guard shot on invincible is at least fair because i believe it's definitely in his character that if he catches invincible like just flying around like a random one out in public that was causing terror or something I don't think Deku is anyone that would hesitate at all in order to catch somebody by surprise in order to take them down, especially when you see instances like how he pulled up on Shigaraki in the final war. That shit was grimy, and it was a very outer hero thing, but Deku didn't mind at all because Shigaraki was causing complete terror. So let's say Deku charges up a real slingshot of Fajin, one for all, 100% all charged straight up at mark at the fastest speed he could get himself to and he manages to land a gear shift touch in order to change the velocity of the invincible he's fighting speed i think if deku was fighting with the intent that he was fighting shigaraki in the final war literally a force described as 120 percent of one for all and him pulling out five detroit smashes in quick succession all because he knew shigaraki was basically just tanking it all with that type of intent i think deku can genuinely hurt invincible for a short period of probably five to ten minutes before outputting 
that much power genuinely just has a rebound and quickly just wrecks his body while Invincible is able to recover from all of that. Because even though that really is like some crazy shit for Deku, it is also one of them things that Invincible would probably come out of that with a broken nose and maybe a black eye. Now after this, I believe the fight gets pretty ugly as Invincible is now on guard and he knows Deku's intent is taking him out. So it's almost like a complete train wreck after this. Because due to Deku trying to recover from all of that whiplash on the spot and him having no immediate healing factor, he is genuinely just sitting there as Mark piles into him and it essentially just becomes a completely one-sided fest of Invincible tossing Deku around. I would love for the fight to be able to go on longer, but the strength and the overwhelming force that is that just comes with being a Viltrumite in general is genuinely just insanely OP when you look at it, comparing like the Invincible comic to My Hero Academia, the anime and where it scales. Like, Invincible has genuinely tanked hard beatings from the likes of which of his father, who tossed him state to state and basically sent him through a train. Battle Beast, who is a complete monster, who I, I, I can't see All Might doing a single thing to someone on the likes of that level. Like, what Invincible has gone through is genuinely too damn much compared to what Deku has to give in a certain time span if we're just doing a straight 1v1 fight. It's a fun fight on paper, but unfortunately, Invincible just ends up coming out the way more overpowered ass hero. Let me know if I'm tripping in the comments below. Does Deku stand any chance? fighting invincible at all what's your opinion my name is time pizza and i'll see you pizza people on the other side of the slice we move